they were economically backward. And one day during a class trip, my mom noticed he didn't have slippers on his foot. When my mom asked him, uh, what have raised your slippers? He said he had only one slipper, which broke last week and he didn't have money to buy a new one. And my mom immediately bought a new pair of slippers for him. While saying this, he broke down on the stage and said, back then, this one simple gesture meant a world to him. And now, when he's well settled in Dubai, he always donates clothes or shoes to backward students. For us, when we listen to it, it sounds like a very small thing. But this small thing impact lives. And this is the power and impact of compassionate love. So before sharing the, another personal story, it's time for a most awaited session. The Inspiron exclusive edutainment session on how to leverage Toastmasters to build a career. Today's speaker is an active member of Toastmasters for the last six years, a division champion of International Speech Contest 2016, 2018, and 2019, and Evaluation Contest in 2017 and 2019. Currently a second year MBA student at Manipal Institute of Management and president of Mahe Toastmasters Club. A wonderful person and a wonderful mentor Toastmaster Flexen Fernandez. Over to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Royal, for that colorful and touching introduction. My gratitude to Toastmaster Fiona, her entire team, and to everyone at Inspiron Toastmasters for giving me this opportunity to speak to you all today. This is my third session that I'm having with Inspiron Toastmasters. And uh, if the repeated invitation is because you'll have a certain fondness towards me, then let me reciprocate and put it on record that the fondness is equally shared because there have been umpteen Saturdays when I have out of the blue decided to drop by at Inspiron Toastmasters, sit at the back of IIPP Hall and attend a meeting and absorb the positive energy and warmth that Inspiron Toastmasters shares. And although right now I miss the homey feeling of IIPP Hall, um, the learning and the positive energy is something that still reflects in your online meetings, I must say. So thank you, first of all, for the opportunity. Well, um, how to leverage your career on Toastmasters or how to further your career using Toastmasters as a leverage? Um, let me, on the outset, have one clarity here that this is not going to be an education session. It's going to be more of a testimonial because I think I stand a perfect testimony to the magic that Toastmasters can work in your life because it most certainly has worked in mine. All it needs is a little bit of an investment. And when I say investment, I am not referring to that $45 membership fee that we pay to TMI. I'm referring to being able to put a little bit of your heart and soul into what we do in Toastmasters so that we can grab every opportunity that come our way and use it to build a solid career. Um, first of all, I would like to know among uh, those in the virtual room right now, how many non-Toastmasters do we have? Maybe through a thumbs up or, uh, you know, if your cameras are on, or maybe you can just drop a me in the chat box if I could just know who are the non-Toastmasters that we have in the audience. Because of all the people that I'm speaking to, the most important people that I need to address today is you guys. Okay, I, I guess there are no non-Toastmasters. That's all right. Let's, um, nevertheless, then in that case, this uh, talk might be um, a recollection of how uh, and rather reinforcing for ourselves as to the benefits of Toastmasters and how it can actually help us even further in our careers and our day-to-day -day lives. Um, I have been part of three Toastmasters clubs so far. The first one was ITC Pathfinders when I was working for ITC Infotech. The current one is, uh, well, that was a corporate club. And the current one is Mahe Toastmasters Club, which is a student club. I was also part of a community club, Winners Club. Now, the first and the last club, we have a fixed 
set of uh, you know a, a potential pool who can become your members you know either the students of the college or uh, employees the one thing that i've noticed um, when it comes to someone not joining a toastmasters club i believe is a major misconception out there there are many people that i have figured when i speak to people they think that toastmasters is a place meant for top speakers uh, if you are a, if you are a, a, if you are the kind of person who can hold your cool and pull out a speech with a plum and wow your audience then that's when you should join toastmasters now we know it for a matter of fact that that is not true toastmasters is basically in my opinion the biggest laboratory in the world and that's the reason why it works i call it a laboratory because toastmasters probably is the only place in the whole world where you can put your communication skills and your leadership skills to the test and experiment with it now of course as speakers we come on stage we deliver speeches and probably that of course there isn't any other place in the world when you can go and stand on a stage grab a mic on a podium deliver a speech or maybe make a presentation and not be judged for it if you happen to make a small little error or maybe a major blunder you will be judged for it but it's only in toastmasters where you are encouraged to make mistakes because we understand and we appreciate the fact that if you're not going to make mistakes you're not going to learn so why you are on stage going blank losing your mind uh, going nervous you will see that the audience is clapping for you encouraging you asking you to go further and compete because we've been exactly where you are right now so we understand exactly what you are feeling so it's not just about providing an opportunity to experiment and figure out your communication skills before you can go and apply it in the real world in your day to day life be it a personal conversation in your relationships be it uh, during a social gathering or most importantly during an office conversation during a job interview during uh, a presentation that you have to make in front of a board or a team of investors everything that you need all the skills that you need over there is something that you have already practiced and experimented in your toastmasters club before you can go ahead and apply it over there and it's also with leadership qualities as well uh, today i am the president of mahe toastmasters club um and i have 34 siblings of mine whose personality development and growth is my responsibility and i'm lucky to be a part of a club which is so dynamic and vibrant but then there will be those moments when there will be a dip in energy when there will be a lack of enthusiasm and those are times when i as the president need to get back lift the phone speak to some of my club members also my officers and understand what's going wrong is there a, is there something going wrong that's the reason that why this is happening maybe the fault lies in me maybe not maybe it's something else maybe it's the curriculum but whatever it is it's moments like these that give me the opportunity to introspect my leadership qualities as to is everything that i'm doing working now do we get these chances to do the same while we are at work i'm not sure but in toastmasters you have the opportunity to experiment your leadership qualities also before you apply it in the real world scenario before you apply it at work um so that's the number one reason i believe anybody and everybody must join a toastmasters club because it is the biggest experimenting laboratory in the world and these opportunities is something that you will not find anywhere else the other thing uh, you know the speeches that we give at a club this it's more certainly the speeches are a reflection of what the real professional world outside uh, demands from us i can give you one example um where toastmasters has played a a pivotal role in shaping my career in fact there have been two instances one was when i kick started my career and the second was when i made a major transition in my career and both the times are leveraged it on toastmasters i remember the first one now i was among those lucky people who has had the opportunity to be part of toastmasters since high school because there was a gavels club in my uh, school so my journey started as a gavelier and uh, um, I don't know how this is possible, but today, if you tell me something, I'll not remember it tomorrow. But back then, being young and highly impressionable, I used to grasp things in and hold it, and I would not forget. In fact, I still remember a lot of speeches by D. T. M. Bharti Shevgur, by D. T. M. Malini Hepar, by D. T. M. Veera Kattikeya that I heard back then in 2005 and 6. That I remember even the words of it to this day. And this was another such instance when I gave my icebreaker speech in Gavels Club back then. I remember. Toastmaster Captain Vincent Pius gave me my evaluation. He was from Winners Club, 
since the Mentara club, he was there and he evaluated me. And my icebreaker was a nice chronological list of events, everything that had happened in my life, right from my birth up till that point. And in his evaluation, while Captain Vincent Pass appreciated my confidence and the vigor with which I spoke, he told me that apart from everything that we have found out about you, I wish we had gotten a little deeper insight as to what are the moral values, what is it that drives you, what are your uh, core beliefs, what is your belief system, what is it that inspires you to wake up every morning and take on challenges every day. Had you given us an insight into that, you would have gotten to know Flexen a little more better. Now, many years down the line, when I was in final year engineering at uh, St. Joseph Engineering College, Warmanswood. The first campus interview that we had was from ITC in Patel. The interview was, uh, was seated in front of me. I had cleared all the previous rounds. In fact, ITC just decided to drop a bomb. They had given us no intimation that they were coming. They just showed up one fine day and they said that we are going to pick students from this college and we are going to give them a job. We were more than 400 of us who had applied that day. Six of us got the job. I was not among the toppers. I was among the most average, uh, you know, in my batch of students. But what made me stand out, one, was my resume. Because I had, like I said, grabbed every opportunity I could. And those opportunities came to me early in my life, thanks to Toastmasters and to that Gavits Club. But more importantly, um, well, probably, uh, if you could, you know, unmute your mics and tell me, what is that one most common question that is asked in almost every interview out there? Tell me about yourself. Yes, exactly. Can you please tell me about yourself? That's one of the most common questions that you have in every interview and that's for a given. When that question was asked to me, believe it or not, the immediate thing that was running in my mind was that evaluation given to me by uh, Captain Vincent Pius for my icebreaker speech. Now, I knew that my resume is right there in their hand. They know which branch of engineering I'm in, what my scores are, uh, what uh, my name is, uh, what my address is. Basically, my entire Janam Kundali is in their hands in the form of that paper. So what is it that I can speak? I did not start with my name. I did not start with anything cliche. I went on to say, if I can remember, I went on to say something like this. I'm the kind of person who likes to look at the glass half full rather than half empty. Because I love to maintain a positive outlook towards life. And although it's not possible to always be positive, I try my best to do so. And you will be able to observe the same disposition in my semester grades because my grades have been like a sinusoidal wave. They are up and they are down and they go up and they are down. So whenever it's down, I do not let failure get to my heart and whenever it goes up, I don't let success get to my mind. And that's the kind of person that I've been. That was the introduction I gave about myself to my interviewers that day. And I could see on the faces that they were impressed. The interview went on and everything that day was about all the opportunities that I grabbed in my life, all throughout my life, and I put in my resume. Most of which was, again, thanks to Toastmasters and all the uh, speaking opportunities that I'd taken up in my life. All those opportunities where I'd taken up to show leadership in small little ways during my college life. Be it during a fest, be it during the college day celebrations. Whatever it was that I'd done where I displayed leadership skills was where I was, where I was quizzed upon. So the first campus interview of, my, uh, of uh, the college that year, the first company that came, the company that was sought after by everyone and I was among the six chosen few to get that job. So that's the reason why I started the session by saying that Toastmasters has most certainly worked magic in my life because it helped me find my first job ever. Um, well, the rest of the things that we learn in Toastmasters are a given. Most important of them all is confidence. And if I do have a certain amount of comfort on stage, and confidence, then it's mainly thanks to Toastmasters because like swimming or cycling, confidence is only something that you can learn over time. It, it's not something that you can read off a manual. It's something that you need to push yourself into the most uncomfortable of circumstances and learn from that. So if it is the stage that makes you nervous, then you need to grab as many opportunities to be on stage as possible because it's only then that you'll gain that confidence. And that's another opportunity. Uh, an opportunity to develop confidence is what we get over here at Toastmasters. While I was working at ITC Infotech, I happened to befriend a person who was in the running to become the vice president of marketing for ITC Infotech. 
sorry, I'm seeing members who are joining and I'm just taking time to admit them because I'm uh, seeing that the permissions are coming to me as well. All right. Yeah. So I happen to uh, befriend this person at ITC Infotech who was in the running to become the vice president of marketing. I think the next appraisal cycle and the interview cycle for the, uh, for the um, promotions were going to happen in a matter of seven or eight months. And he tells me that he had hired a personal coach, a personality development coach for himself to help him sharpen his skills. Now, because here's the thing, whether it is your first job or later on in your career, you, you will be surrounded with at least 10, 20 or maybe more people who will have the same amount of technical skills that you have the same amount of capability and knowledge that you have. What is it that differentiates you from the rest of them is your soft skills. Are you able to carry yourself in a manner that uh, you radiate confidence? Are you able to motivate an entire team to get things done? Are you able to align a personal person's personal goal with that of an organization? All of these things come into picture and your personality plays an important role. So this friend of mine tells me that he has hired this personality development coach whom he was paying roughly one and a half lakhs for a three months, um, uh, you know, course. One and a half lakhs, believe me. And I told him, why? When you have an uh, uh, when you have a Toastmasters club right in campus, although right now six, seven months might not be the time, but have you invested much lesser, but much earlier in your life, you would have already been there. You wouldn't have had the need to do all of this because this is exactly what we do in Toastmasters, but we do it slowly in the right manner. We understand that working on a personality and a confidence is not like running a sprint. It is a marathon. It happens slowly with time. And uh, it's only then, uh, you know, when we take time and understand each and every aspect of it is when you will be able to truly grow and develop. In fact, I think right now in the audience, I, I suppose I saw uh, a person, a, a Toastmaster from my club by the name Chandan. And I must quote his example because Chandan sits right next to me in class. And I think he is the best example for, for a 360 degree transformation of personality. When Chandan joined college initially, he used to be, he used to, uh, his icebreaker was titled, I'm an introvert. He was the kind who would never speak to anybody, never, let alone have a conversation with anyone who would just turn around and walk away with anybody trying to speak to him. But today, Toastmaster Chandan gives one of the most humorous speeches in our clubs. He not only makes uh, make sure that others pull his legs and make fun of him, but he gets back with the wackiest one-liners that makes uh, uh, that makes the whole situation lighthearted. And he has developed his personality to such a great extent that for me, he is a life testimonial to the magic of Toastmasters. So why should we, uh, you know, when we have an inexpensive, definitely comparative to that one and a half a personality development push, Toastmasters is an extremely inexpensive option that we have. Why not leverage this? Why not take uh, you know, advantage of this and work on it instead of doing something else and drastic when we realize much later that this is what we truly need in our lives. Um, another thing that we learn, one of the most basic concepts in Toastmasters is how to structure a speech. And that's something that's very important once you land yourself in a corporate environment. Because while you are in a corporate meeting, when you are in a corporate setup, they don't expect you to talk for hours and hours and they don't expect you to run behind the bush. They expect you to be brief, concise, to the point and convince your entire team in favor of your opinion. So you need to be persuasive as well. So this entire aspect of being able to structure your thoughts in the right manner, being able to uh, get others to understand your side of the story and to uh, get them to cast you their vote in your favor, which is a scenario that we see very often in conferences, also something that we learn in almost every speech that we deliver in Toastmasters. But probably one of the most valuable thing that I personally have gained in Toastmasters was the friends that I have made right now, right here today. If in case I was an account student and I wanted to wanted opportunities to work on my accounting skills, maybe through an internship or an, or an articleship, I can give, lift the phone and give a call to CA MNPI or Toastmasters DTM Sridhar Kamal. If I wanted to become an entrepreneur and start, up, start my own business, I could lift the phone and talk to Toastmaster Tanuja Mabin. If I needed to better my English skills, I could speak to DTM Malini Hebbar or Toastmaster Sunita Pereira. If I wanted to work on, uh, I'm, I work on a lot of uh, ma marketing content for a lot of startups. So if I wanted to get it reviewed, I can reach out to DTM Bharti Shevdu. I have the finest of friends 
in many cities today and it is all thanks to those masks in fact this probably is not related to career but i must say this that a year from now when my father was admitted at the hospital and had lost my mind um not sure how to handle the situation i was i remember i was in father miller's hospital sitting outside the hospital ward and guess who happens to walk by dr ck balal and i explained the situation to him I, i well i didn't have to ask for his help he was the one who told me how can i help you what are you doing here and he told me take anything you need i'm here for you and on the other side there was dpm hima urmila shetty who was also giving me medical advice as to which doctor to reach out to what to do what not to do so i have a bounty of friends which i would have never made bounty of friends from all across from different uh, parts of uh, different industries that i would never had the opportunity to interact with and ever have a conversation if it was not for those masters and this networking especially comes into the picture when you are job hunting when i was done with my 3 year stint at itc infotech i decided now it's time to earn a little more money you know i had already got two promotions but i suppose i was greedy for more so i got in touch with my toast master friends from infosys and from accenture i dropped my resumes with them and they got me job interviews and i had landed a job at both these places but it was also at that point of time i had in fact dropped my uh, um my pa- i dropped my papers i put down my papers at itc infotech thinking that i was going to join infosys bangalore because they were well giving me the bigger package uh when it comes to uh, you, uh, you know the salary package because but uh, a month down the line there was this voice in my head that didn't let me get sleep an entire night uh, i it was a time in my life when i had to ask myself a very important question are you really happy doing what you are what you are doing the answer was a resounding no and i wanted to figure out what is it that i truly enjoy doing now at this point of time i had been part of the district public relations team now uh, we know how a district works at that time the whole of karnataka and kerala put together was one district the district public relations officer which today we call the district public relations manager back then was dtm kavya gowda i was working with her as part of a team i was the media liaison lead now as part of this what we would do is whenever there is an event we would uh, make sure that there was a press material released we would um, share uh, i would get in touch with media houses okay i think the timing flag could be unshared i would love to see your faces rather than the flag um yes we would get in touch with the media houses we would arrange for press conferences we would interview famous leaders in our district and in our division we would speak to division champions put their interviews out there we would create content for, for blogs for social media so there was a lot of work that we used to do as part of um the district public relations team and this was serious work i know that there have been many pr teams after that but dtm kavya gowda gave us a unique experience that year because she was the um, head of uh, digital marketing uh, um, she was a digital marketing strategist for ibm india at that time so she, uh, she could bring the best of two worlds the professional and post masters and operate wise every wednesday we would have this call where the entire team from karnataka kerala and bangalore would get uh, sorry from uh, bangalore mysore and kerala and mangalore too would get on a call and would discuss and plan our work for the next week you would start just like a work call you know you start with the mom of the last meeting you go through statuses assign work plan work for the next week and that's how professional things were so at that point of time when i was uh, confused about my career i remember having that conversation with dtm kavya and she told me let's in a IT is not your thing then why don't you do something that you truly enjoy why don't you work and start a career in digital marketing and i said how is that even possible i have never done digital marketing i've never had a, a, a you know a, i do not have a background in digital marketing i do not have any qualification because at that time i hadn't done my mba so who is ever going to hire me for the role of a digital marketing analyst i started applying for jobs and i leveraged my entire resume based on the work that i had done for public relations in district 92 post masters i shr- this is this was again you know dtm kavya gui- guiding me she told me shrink everything related to uh, it and programming and all those technical jargons that are so rich in your resume narrow it down L- add more and detail more about what you have done in post masters for public relations 
because what you have done is basically marketing. It may not be digital, but what you have done is nothing but marketing. So leverage your resume based on what you have done in Toastmasters. Go get yourself that interview, and then again, convince the person on the other side of the table based on everything that you have learned on in Toastmasters. I know that the day I gave that interview at my second company that I work for as a digital marketing analyst, um, I, I, the company was called T Box Private Limited, and that was the only company I gave an interview for this role of a market, digital marketing analyst, and I got the job. I remember during that interview, there were at least 30 people that were interviewed for the same position on that same very day, and. I thought there was no chance that I was going to get the job because all of these came with years of experience on their resume. So towards the end of my interview with the CEO, I remember him asking, if I'm going to hire you, I'm, it's basically me taking a hammer and hitting my own feet with it. Uh, you know? So why would I ever hire you? So I told him, sir, just one reason. The 29 people sitting out there are here, maybe because they are interested in what they're doing or maybe because they are not. But the fact that I am here looking for a transition in my career proves that I'm passionate about what I'm doing. So don't you think you stand to win if you hire me than them? Because you know that you are going to have a dedicated employer in me. Now, again, the whatever it is that I spoke, if there has been a little bit of reflection of mental clarity and also um, clarity of purpose, all of this has not come to me on a limb. And of course, what I spoke that day during the interview was not something that I hadn't thought of before getting into that interview room. I knew that such a question would most certainly be posed to me. And I only have my Toastmasters training to thank for all of this. Uh, be it during those impromptu speeches that I've given, be it during those speech preparation moments when I've structured good speeches. All of these moments have gone into helping me land a good interview to to handle an interview with the uh, with a certain amount of confidence to convince the other person that i am someone worth hiring and getting that job now the last point that i need to share with you guys probably the most insignificant one but nevertheless it is um, prominent is if nothing just having that toastmasters brand on your resume itself is a major conversation starter and yet another interview that I recently gave was for Samson uh, when I was trying to get into a, 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 for an internship. And yes, bragging rights. Uh, needless to say, I got that internship as well. But the one thing that stood out during that conversation was the Toastmasters thing that was in my resume. And they were like, oh, Toastmasters, I've heard about this. So tell me more. So I could steer that entire interview based on what was in my resume and Toastmasters played a very important role over there. And that brand, they would have known or not known about Toastmasters, but the fact that there is Toastmasters International mentioned in your resume does add to the brand value and uh, put you in a better light versus those who haven't had that opportunity. So I think these are reasons good enough why a person should be joining Toastmasters Club. Doesn't matter which club, but become a member of Toastmasters. Most importantly, becoming a member is not sufficient. What's important is that you invest yourself into it. Give your heart and soul into the learnings and try and extract from each and every opportunity that comes to our way in Toastmasters. It's only then that you will be able to truly leverage Toastmasters to build a strong career. Thank you once again for the opportunity. And if anybody has any questions, and if you believe I'm qualified enough to answer them, then please, you're more than welcome. Any questions? Okay, uh, if there are no sessions, once again, thank you to everyone at Inspiron for the opportunity and back to you Toastmaster Royal. Thank you Toastmaster Lexon Fernandez. It was indeed a wonderful well-planned and beautifully crafted session. I was truly inspired by it. It's always an honor to have you here and Inspinol is enamored by your education session. Now, it's time for my second story. A few years back, 
I was going through a very rough week. Things were not going as planned. Everything was a mess in my life. I was searching for a job in Bangalore. I was clueless about what I wanted to do. Friendships were falling apart and I was missing home. And I was feeling lonely. I felt like life was serving me a cocktail of bad emotions, just like 